So, you know, like I told him, is there any way you put the radio box in the room? And no problem, turn off the TVs right around our area, and boom, we, we had that section from 100% to 50 for his own. But the problem is, we're going to be nicer to get all the coaches and all the teams together and just like. It, it would be nice, ideally. Uh, so let's, let's leave that as a future agenda item, closing ceremony options. Maybe, we, you know, we can try it. Um, all right. I know that certain, certain parts have a, their ideal situation set up, and then when I got here, that's how it was. Um, and it seems to work, and then when we discuss it in coaches' meetings, everybody seems to agree, no, I'd rather do it myself. However, we do have leftover trophies here, uh, which then we become a storage area, and trophies get lost, broken, they're missing. Um, that don't have their, they don't their, have their banquets. Their banquets. So in those situations, I would love to have you know a ceremony for, for the team. Um, so definitely a future agenda item will be that. Last time we did it, that like that here, Chang was here, probably his last year here. Did it in here, it was by division, so the whole division won't have their banquet or whatever. It was really loud, because of all the kids oh, talking, it was echo, and with the sound system not being the top quality, you can't <laughs> What? Then, as you were saying, as soon as they got the trophies, they sleep. Or, you get some parents are like, you know, I gotta leave now, like, you know, real cocky, real bitchy, whatever, and so it's just that whole thing. And then, when I was at Garvanza, the way they do it is they do it on the field. So all the parents are on the field, and they have somebody standing, like, opening day, standing like that, and, and then by team, they come up and they do it. Then they have, like, okay, if parents play against kids, little fun, that kind of thing, food, barbecue. So maybe something like that. It is something fun. we can visit. However, the number of teams we have it makes it a little bit yeah, challenging. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. if we do it by division, that gives us more of an option. Um, so let's discuss it at our next meeting. Um, I want to bring the um, <laughs> what I had printed out. I thought I had it with me regarding the surveys because I wanted to talk to you guys about it and have you guys um, spread the word for me. So if I can be excused for a couple minutes. Right. Uh, what's another good idea? Sorry, no, I, I no one wants to do a banquet. That's no one wants to do a banquet. You don't have to do a banquet. But uh, a one day turn. Yeah. 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 No number. You should have won that game. You got I think it's going to work better. You go here and pull a one day turn. You got your chance. There you go. One day all the kids playing because they have a fight game. Finish the day out and then they can have their personal day. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it'll work better by division rather than the whole league. Yeah, because we have the little kids and the big ones. Yeah. It's so much different. You know, yeah. Just everybody's doing their own shit. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So if you can help spread the word at the neighborhood council meetings, uh, just with your friends and family, with park users, with your team, I'd really appreciate it. Alleyparks.org, fill it out, submit it. Um, when you click to exit and not uh, fill out the survey, this is the Alleyparks.org website. Uh, up on top, there's a little search box. If you type in Al Sereno, it'll give you uh, these links. The very top link is Al Sereno Recreation Center. And on the bottom, uh, once you click that link, is uh, Al Sereno's webpage. It has a pool number, it has our facility number, it has a facility email. And on the bottom here, uh, Chris didn't put the major schedule, but on the bottom it has the schedule. It has uh, our program. It, I think the program I did was fall, winter, so I need to update to a spring, summer program. And then it has the basketball registration flyer. I sent in the baseball registration information today, so it should be up there by tomorrow. Um, but that's how I've been. People that call and ask questions are trying to push their web, our website on on them so that they know constantly. The department has one Facebook. Um, and it's kind of difficult to read because when you go on there, it's everybody, every single park's information versus just El Sereno's information. So that's why I direct them to our website because that's what's relevant to El Sereno. But we do have a, uh, a department-wide Facebook. Oh, every, time I, <coughs> every time I go on there, sorry, I'm just like, it's a little difficult. It's not easy really. You have to find El Sereno. So I just, I just use this. So then when you're saying if, if one of us went home and created a center or creation center on Facebook, I mean... No, you, you can't do that. Oh, okay, that. that's not what you said. No. <laughs> Never. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd appreciate if you guys spread the word about the um, survey. It's important that we know the, the direction the department needs to move in. Is there a way um, that we can get, like, say, a laptop in here or in here because there's probably a lot of parents that don't have computer access and since they're here already for practices I would come in here have somebody walk them through it they would want me they would say no and they would give me the paper agenda and have me pass that out yeah you have wireless here um, no, so can. in other words, in other words, we can have more, get more copies yes, and have them on some people. Definitely, definitely. And they have it in Spanish too. And the, it, when you go online, they'll give you option English or Spanish to take the survey. And I would just recommend if you can do it, do it. Uh, Michael Schull had said that it was going to be up to the end of the year, so I'm not exactly sure how much longer the survey is going to be up. So. It isn't, it's not so they're taking this ones manually, or yeah, they have to be done? No, you could do it online, and you could do this ones too. Um, yeah, and if you want to, if those of you that have a hard copy right now, if you want to do it, I will hand deliver it. Um, and if you would rather do it online, that's fine. If you're not going to be using a hard copy, I would gladly take it back to have someone else. Um, so I'm just talking about the hard copy, because again, most of my parents are not computer savvy. Yes. So giving them a hard copy and have them fill them out. That's right. That, I, mean, yeah. I, I could fill it online, but I can make copies of these yeah. and then yeah. hand them over to a parent. Maybe it comes with a copy. Maybe 500 copies of those first. And if anybody needs Spanish, that'd be nice. If anybody needs Spanish copy, I can bring it with you. Go to their office and have them print out 500, all the Spanish and English. Yeah. 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 Yeah
Are they ever going to make a presentation to the uh, council, city council, so that we could go to those meetings if possible? I, I honestly don't know. Mm -hmm. What type of meeting are you talking about? The budget meeting. The budget meeting about. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Are you talking about after the survey results are in? Yeah, after the survey results are in. Right? Yeah, I think they're compiling all the information. I'm not sure if the department's going to present it in a committee. They're going to present the findings. You know, I don't know how they compile the data on it. Um, but, I mean, the reason they're doing the whole thing is to drive, basically, it helps Rec and Parks to be able to better look at what the users of the park need. Right, because with limited resources, you want to make sure you're spending the resources where people want them. Right, you don't want to waste money. So I don't know the specific procedure of how it's going to happen. Um, I don't know if Rec and Parks is going to like consolidate it all and then present it, or how it's going to happen. We can try and find that out for you. That, that would be but, great if you guys keep us updated on that. That would be great because we could also, if, if there will be a meeting, some type of a meeting where 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 the ask for more input or they, they want the community to go out there and support it one way or another. I'm sure all of us here could maybe spread out the word, you know, to our people. And then how many times can we submit it? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> but one, one thing is important though is when they do, every year the city has budget hearings, right, for all the city departments, and they go through each department literally book by book, okay, today, you know, these meetings we're doing record parks, libraries this day. So it's really important that you know, regardless of what department or what issue you feel that people go to those meetings and really advocate for things. If it's things like making sure there's enough, you know, so enough teams can play or, you know, that the water fountains work or whatever it is. Um, but those come up, I think, in April. April, May is usually when the mayor's budget goes because the mayor presents the budget to council. And then council goes through it and they review it department by department. Um, so it's really important that the more active you guys are. I mean, that's, I can't stress enough. It's not BS, it's true. Um, okay, well, when do you have the copies? I could go pick them up at your office and then we'll pass them out to the parents. Yeah, I mean, you want to stop by Monday, that's fine. Yeah? That way we can get the, uh, the pass them out to our parents. That's yeah, probably I think the best be way. Easier. Yeah, that would be easier. Yeah. Can you give me a copy? Pick them up, like, that, that way you can pick them up too. Okay. You know what, and even if, God forbid it's past the deadline, we'll still do whatever we can to make sure that input's heard. Yeah, because that's okay. the important thing. That's not okay. for the deadline, it's what the parents are saying. Thank you. Oh, okay. 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 Back on, um, we were talking about the budget. Mm -hmm. I guess the side note of that is that we've had a couple of discussions. Said we get in a, a private sponsor that wants to donate $10,000 to this park. How do we get it to this park? There is something called the LA Parks Foundation. Does anyone know about that? To the website. Yeah, the LA Parks Foundation is actually pretty cool. Um, it's the city's, correct me if I'm wrong, it's, it's the city's basically, it's the Parks' 501c3 nonprofit tax deductible foundation um, that basically lives to help existing parks within the city of LA. So they have accounts, and if they don't already have it, they will create one for parks in the city. So, for example, say you love. I don't know, something, you love park in Venice, right? And there's not an actual foundation. It's in a park. It's in a park. I'm just, I just like to pick, I pick ridiculous examples on purpose, right? Um, I like to do that on purpose. But anyways, um, they have an account where you can basically make, and you can do it online or in check or whatever, and you say donation for El Sereno Park or Venice Park, and it basically creates an earmarked fund that can only be spent at that facility. Will the city take some of those funding, or does the 100% donation stay at that park? No, it goes to the park. I think the Parks Foundation takes a little bit for like their administrative just to manage the fund, but imagine, I mean, how many parks are there in the city? Hundreds. Yeah, so imagine, imagine, imagine a giant bank account with like 200 different ones. And because legally, if you give money and say, I want it only for El Sereno Park, they can't give it to somewhere else. Because that's your money that you're donating. So it's very doable, and it's done for a lot of other parks across the city, mm -hmm. and it's something to really take advantage of um, because it's tax deductible. It's a tax write off. Right, right, right. So let's say, let, let's say someone were to donate uh, uh, a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars there and say, I want this money to go to Incidental Park, and I want it specifically to be used for this one thing. Can that be done? What's that one thing? Well, for example, <laughs> shady stuff? Are we talking no, about? No, no, no. That's the the I want a statue of myself. <laughs> 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 black. 
for example, uh, I, I've been working on this one thing where I want to pay for every single kid at the park to pay for free, so no one would ever have to ever pay again to pay for the park. If I were to do that and they say, I want this money to be used specifically for that only, is, is that what I think that I think that is possible. I mean, I'll talk to the to the head of LA Park Foundation just to see the, the specifications for what can be done. But I mean, it's pretty standard for nonprofits because you know when you're accepting money, right? And a lot of times people give money based upon conditions, right? Say sometimes people give, you know, when you go somewhere and you see something in somebody's name, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they say, oh, we'll give you a million bucks, but we want our name on it. You know, so yeah. there's there's always different ways of doing things. But yeah, absolutely. Yeah, really. I mean, I think it's, sorry, stop me from overstepping here. Um, you know, I think it's really important that you guys, you know, that's that's something to definitely utilize. I mean, if you can find someone who has a big bank account. Well, that's the thing. You know? I, had, I, had a, I had a private sponsor, what was it, like a year and a half ago, but because we couldn't coordinate how that money we wanted, the uh, uh, police officer's office wanted to check, and then they were going to figure out how to put it back to the park. That's why you do it to the LA Parks Foundation. Okay, see, they, they couldn't tell us that because that's when I was working with Daniel at the research office. Oh, yeah, Daniel. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you honestly, like, I've done this for other parks in our district. The city does it all across the whole point. Well, maybe you have a card or something? Yeah, I'll, I have cards. Yeah. <laughs> but they do have a website, LA Parks Foundation. Yeah. And like literally, you can go on and donate like two bucks, or you can donate two thousand. That's something that you can really do because you can really start to build up advocacy and a vision for the park. Because we all know the city budget is not in a good position. Correct. But that does, that's not going to stop the community from really mobilizing. You know? And then you can put on the Facebook that nobody's really going to make for this park. <laughs> that out there, and many people can start donating to the other yeah, on Facebook's page. <laughs> Take a month to really think about the ideas that you feel, or your friends, or who, you know, your teammate, you know, kids, or whatever. Think of priorities for, you know, improvements to the park. Right? Maybe it's the fence. Maybe it's a water fountain. Maybe it's trees. You know, who, grass. Whatever it is, and bring bring your ideas. Come ready to brainstorm, and then because you guys, as the park advisory board, I mean, the whole point of that is you guys set the agenda for how the park is going to go. Right? You represent the users and the constituents of the park. So your your input almost will help shape, you know, where any money that can be found is is spent, right? Yeah. That's the whole point of it. Um, it's your part, so you but you guys need to do the research and figure out what you feel is feels essential for the community. But say for example that you thought this is necessary and important for safety reasons and, and the park has, you know, I think sixty nine thousand right available for uh, use for infrastructure improvement. I, I don't know it's a my I don't know. Well, let's say, let's say it's a high number like that. Like it was two years ago. Then, then how, how does that work? I mean, I don't know. You're talking about how the money is transferred? Or, or how, how does it get decided? Who decides? A lot of it has to do with, I mean, that's one of the reasons I think Jennifer's been trying to 
trying to get the park advisory board up for so long is because I know the park advisory board doesn't decide that. Yeah. Yes, uh, but they have major. They do have input in terms of thoughts. <laughs> I mean, as far as I know, uh, you know, planning construction with admin is what decides that. Uh, park advisory board is asked when there's again, should it be netting or should it be fence or what's the priority of the park? Um, however, it's not something that I'm like, oh, they don't come and ask me. Yeah. Well, what do you want, Jen? Do you want a skate park, a tennis court, or I don't do they, you know. I get funding for uniforms, for trophies, for that's what I'm in control of. Planning construction is not what I do. Um, I program, the program director. So the park advisory board, uh, I will, you know, I would bring it to your attention if requested to. Like for example, if there's, let's say they demolish that building and there's something that's going to be put there, and we need input from community or from the path, then that's when you guys come in to advise and to tell us what ideas you have that would benefit. But I think the point B funds and all that, I mean, I really can't. It's, I mean, the way that the way the funds are spent, right, that. is that, you know, Jennifer's right, obviously, you know, it's not you or I just signing checks, because if it is, we would have synthetics feel over the very apart. Um, but, you know, the Park Advisory Board can create sort of a vision and sort of an idea of it. It doesn't mean it's all going to happen right away, right? It doesn't mean it's all going to come to pass tomorrow, that millions of dollars can be identified. But if, you know, say the Park Advisory Board you know, identifies, okay, priority number one, we want, think it's something crazy. Fence. fence, number one is one fence, number two is this, number three is this, and that's something that planning construction feels is a legitimate thing. Safety-wise, it's an important thing, the community feels. Well, then that helps that prioritization of money, right? But they're not just gonna spend money without thinking, I mean, of the people who are actually using the facility um, don't think it's a real thing. I mean, God forbid, unless it's a real safety hazard or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Last time in the past we discussed that, and that was one of our high priority things. It was a fence because of you know, the safety concerns. And then uh, the have disbanded, and the neighbor council has been doing anything about it. So, both of us gather some interest. And like 95% of people that I talked to the parents, they all say, yeah, we need a higher fence. And then, uh, you're saying? Yeah, but you were going around collecting. Yeah, a lot, of us were, a lot of us were, and then we got a lot of signatures, and I went to the neighborhood council, and they voted unanimously to, to send a letter to the parks and rights to increase the, the fence height. So, so uh, we need to simply recommend that to uh, let the uh, Michael Show know about that motion and the signatures. And then once that happens, now what? What I would say is, I mean, I wasn't here then, so I don't know that. Well, no, it was yesterday. It was that, that vote took place. Oh, the, uh, the vote took place. Uh, the uh, 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 they were going to be yeah. Oh, for the fence. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, I would definitely bring that to the next meeting. Bring sort of what you've done. Because the neighborhood council funding is different from who be funding or anything like that. The neighborhood council has discretionary ability to work. But bring, bring that thought. Bring, you know, with your signatures, all that stuff to the next meeting. Hopefully everyone will bring some good stuff. And you guys are all experts at the facility. You know what's needed. Um, and that, you know, if that's something that the path you guys decide should be a priority, then, you know, it's your priority. But if it's something else, I mean, that's, it's a democratic process. So that would be an item that the PAD would look at deciding again? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's your, I'm not the PAD. I'd say the PAD is, I'm just curious, because I'm, if that's the PAD decides this is a high priority issue, can someone on the PAD communicate to the Michael Show that, or can you just communicate to Jennifer that? Me. Like that? It would be me sending it to my supervisor, my supervisor sending it up to Jennifer Matt. Pretty much what he's saying is, once we decide if it's a priority, we need to have a business plan of it with the safety rules, the cost analysis, the priority, the signatures, you know, so we need an outline to provide to them. So it's just like, okay, we just want a fence, but with no evidence to back up why we want a fence. That's pretty much what he's saying. Not only that, right? but funding too. Yeah. yeah. And you know, money. I mean, I can need a new roof and it could be major mold, but if I don't have the money, the tarp pulls up. It depends on the it depends on the scale of the improvement, right? Like in synthetic soccer field, you're talking realistically, unless you do know someone at Nike, you know, introduce me. Um, you know, we're talking that's hundreds of thousands of dollars versus you know, so that's Robbie Lavelle. Okay, so you know what? Um, I got here, but I kind of 
I don't really know who you are, but I'm here from Langdon Park. Can you ask? No? Oh, do you from Lisa's office? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, but maybe you could help us out getting funding, Pop K funding for the park also, because I mean, that, um, that's something. Pop K were the. Like, you go into all that. I don't want to. Oh, the best thing is that. Prop K, the, the Prop K funding is a cycle system, right? So Prop K, we would have to apply for the next application process, which we're more than happy to do. But it's like a, it's a cycle period, right? So the way it works is certain funding is only done in certain years. It's really hard to explain. It's like a 20-year cycle, and it gets reprogrammed every year, but you have to have an application for the cycle. So I think that's something absolutely, it's a, it's a good idea to start thinking about that. I mean, so she wants to, she, the last time she wants training, so she could write an actual grant. Okay. But I want to know, wait, who helps out parts? Because I know other parts that have Pop K, you know, at the Hills, at Pop K. Um, I mean, there's a lot of parks around here that have Pop K, but how did they get that funding? How, who did that, who is responsible for doing the application? The city does the applications. The city does the and, applications. And you, and you want, the thing about having the city doing the applications, you have people who, have done it on a regular basis, yeah. who know what's going to check the boxes, what's yeah. not. But what's that done is with the community input. It's yeah. not, you know, your guys have to have to write the letter, mm -hmm. you know, type it up. But if you guys are saying, okay, this is something that we feel a Prop K okay. application should be made for, absolutely. So, so you, could, you could help us connect with who it is that we... Yeah, I mean, it would be, the, if the PAB is the really the group that has, yeah. and that's the whole point of the PAB to really think, if the PAB says the market uh, okay. I can talk offline about this online. I don't want to think it Okay. But the parts have got a million dollars. Yeah, I was going to say the lights. A million dollars for Prop K. Um, <coughs> Prop K is like really complicated. It's, it's managed by Bureau of Engineering. It's really complex. But it's something we ever heard of. But it's something we never heard of. Yeah, I mean, we'll I think it's it. something you guys should think about what you want to do. But like, it, it comes down to your priorities as a group. Because you know? mm -hmm. everyone's going to have something. Everyone's going to want something different, right? But you as a group are going to have to yeah. prioritize what you want. All right, so I'm going to add one more agenda item, and uh, which is a list of priorities, of SPARC priorities, and then I'm going to, uh, you want to make a motion to adjourn? So, I mean, if everybody can come with their own ideas of what they're thinking. The priorities are the park and bring that to the next meeting. Right. So we just kind of go from that. I'm going to do that last year, so I'm just going to give that to him. Or email it to him and you, and you guys can bring it to the next meeting what we discussed, what we prioritized last time. They might have different priorities. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. but you can look at it as your own stretch. If you want to put me on it, uh, yeah, that way yeah. I can print out. Yeah. Right, so that it's, after that it's done and we go through it and we all agree on it, finally we need to add something, we add it and it's good. And that way we don't do double work. So it was already right. <laughs> we had that survey with us and now. Uh, Hi, my name is Anselmo Flores. I'm part of the Neighborhood Council. I'm actually the East Street representative. And the biggest question last night in terms of the fence, we just want to make sure if funding does go through it, that it's actually adequately lifted. The uh, comment was made by Mr. Pacheco last night about if it's only going to go up two or three feet, is that really going to make a difference? I think he just said yeah, he said feet. 10 feet. So we want to make sure if the budget goes through with it, it's going to accommodate our needs. But if we're going to have the same problem, then we better kind of step back and see if it could be put in other ways or get other funding to make an adequate kind of fence to totally detour <laughs> any accidents that are happening, whether it's the children jumping over or balls going over to affect the traffic that's going over there. So that was the biggest concern, you know, because we can go with funding, but if it's going to have the same problem, then we just kind of like, kind of put a pacifier in the mouth and well, you know. That's, We're not going to raise the fence one foot. You no, that's what, no that's, that's what I'm saying. If it's adequate, 10 feet is adequate. Some people were saying follow the, the ordinance of like Farmdale. Huge. I, I mean, just to pull this term. I don't have uh, that information. Yeah. I, mean, I can send out an email. It is our next agenda for an item on our next yeah. agenda. I can send out an email um, and yeah. see what they respond. But um, like I've, I've said before, this information is not... Oh, no, I'm no, yeah, no, I told you. I told you, and then so. 10 foot spent. I'm hoping that's adequate, but I just don't want to see the funds spent. If it's just going to cause the same problem, then it could be actually utilized for something else. Okay. Uh, I have an uncle that built for $500 in the <laughs> 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 Does he hang out at home? Do you want to share this video? I have a question that's in for two issues, and I wrote up on the karate program, and also on the swimming program. I would encourage you to do outreach to the park if you also write articles about what's going on. And like, for example, here there's an article in the new one I just gave you.
but also also besides that, uh, wrote profiles of people in the community, like the neighborhood council, right? Should we put in there as a business owner on the next page? And uh, people really like that. And I want to encourage, because you guys are actually leaders in the community involved, for the PAB to submit one person, picture, and a short biography of each person, like for every two months. So like one first two months would be one person, next month another person. But somebody who has, uh, you know, in the PAB to also publicize the activities and the volunteerism, but also the, the actual group that's going on. And also, if you guys, I'm not going to come anymore, if you guys want to <laughs> report to the community what you're, what you're deciding, the things you're deciding or the priorities you're discussing, you can make a the secretary, whoever it is, can make a report and we'll pull it and everyone's going to know. Last well, thing, we're going to be without a secretary. La last thing, <laughs> we, we, printed, we printed 19,000 of these and we actually delivered it to 13,700 homes. So if you want people to know about what's going on, this is where you need to start. I mean, you can think about putting these in. Okay, on that and we translated it to uh, the next agenda should also have uh, our votes for offices or nominations for offices. Next is I think uh, February and March. Yeah. Awesome, All right, you want to make a motion? Motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Yeah. Yes. Record time. <laughs> <laughs> as long as we follow the agenda. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm really bad at it. I don't know. <laughs>